and I was told, put up a little sign, Julia, that says, okay, God, you take care of the quality. I'll take care of the quantity. Uh, And then try writing and letting that creative energy write through you. And I said, oh, but what if it doesn't want to? (laughs) And they said, well, just try it. Today's guest is one of the most prolific writers of our time, and she is personally responsible for reigniting the creative passions and output of literally millions around the world. Hailed by the New York Times as the queen of change, Julia Cameron is credited with starting a movement in 1992 that has brought creativity into the mainstream conversation. She's the best-selling author of more than 40 books, both fiction and nonfiction. She's also a poet, a songwriter, filmmaker, and playwright. The Artist's Way has been translated into 40 languages and sold over 5 million copies to date. So, Julia, it is such an honor to have you on the show. I got to be honest, I was like a little kid at Christmas all day and honestly all week thinking about having the chance to talk to you. Um, I'm going to hold these up, not to embarrass you, but just to show you like these are just, I have six of your books right here and that's not even the whole collection. So before we get into questions and conversation, I just want to say thank you for being you. And thank you for your decades of creation and your commitment to helping people get unblocked because you have made such a difference in my life. And I am just so honored and excited that we get to have this conversation today. Well, I'm delighted to be here. uh, And it's delightful that you have a stack of my books. uh, And uh, I I feel that we can go topic to topic. as it suits you. Absolutely. So let's take it back to the beginning. Tell us how this all started and how you became, as the New York Times has called you, the queen of change. Well, I found that I could help people. Uh, I found uh, that the tools that I was using myself uh, were potent for other people. Uh, And um, I found I was doing my morning pages, taking my walks, doing my artist dates, uh, and I started to write little essays, uh, and I, I thought they were just to help a few of my friends who were blocked. Uh, and so I thought when I wrote The Artist's Way that I was writing it for me and 10 people. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, of course, the message of the artist's way that we are all creative and can all become more creative with the use of a few simple tools resonated with many, many people. Five million and going strong. I mean, I have recommended the artist's way to so many people, and I have done morning pages for years and I'm excited to get into the tools, but but I want to talk about something else first. You've written about performance anxiety, specifically when it comes to writing, and this is something that I personally have suffered with. You said that creativity is an awful lot like sex. <laughs> do you, what do you mean by that? And I can go into it if you don't remember exactly the passage you wrote, but it had me laughing out loud because it was so truthful. Well, what I meant was that the littlest touch begins the flow uh, and that we often think, oh, I'm not in the mood. Uh, But then once we get started, the the mood overcomes us. That's right. Uh, And so I do feel that creativity is a lot like sex, where we may feel, oh, I have nothing to say, and then we think, oh, I have a little to say. Uh, And that's like the first stroke. Yes. And I love that you also shared, if it always has to be great, 
that creates a certain amount of performance anxiety. If you're holding yourself to such a high level in your writing that it has to be brilliant, that you have to perform at this level all the time, all you're going to do is feel anxious. And I realized, Julia, that when I was working on my last book, my goodness, I tortured myself so much and I felt so blocked because I had this inner fear that it wasn't going to be great. And that just log jammed everything. Yes, I, I, think, uh, I think trying to be brilliant rather than trying to be of service uh, is a key uh, when I um, started writing uh, and I was still drinking, uh, when I was writing and drinking, I was trying to be brilliant. And uh, every line had to be perfect. Uh, and then when I was struck sober and told to pray and to try and be of service in my writing, uh, I found myself untangling uh, and the um, resultant prose was much better. I think that shift is so powerful, you know, this shift from trying to be brilliant versus just being of service, you know, and trying to get it right versus you just want to be useful or helpful. And um, I loved that you talked about, and you always talk about in your work, invoking a higher power and how that impacts your flow. Well, I think uh, what happened for me, I think we're, we're going ahead a little bit now to talk about the book Seeking Wisdom. Uh, and uh, it's my new book. Uh, and in it, I talk about the power of prayer to impact creativity. Uh, and I found myself asking in my morning pages, what should I write next? And getting the answer back, prayer. And I was horrified. <laughs> and I said, prayer? I'm not holy enough to write about prayer. That should be for somebody much more spiritual than I am. Uh, but the guidance insisted you will write about prayer. Uh, and I found myself saying, oh, maybe I should tell them the beginnings of my story so that I wasn't standing on some pedestal lecturing down. Uh, and I, I talked about being cornered into prayer. Uh, and... Uh, I, I got sober, uh, and I was told, now, if you want to stay sober, you'll need to pray. <laughs> and I said, you don't understand. I have 16 years of Catholic education. I, I don't like prayer. Uh, and they said, you don't understand. You must believe in something. Uh, so I asked a girlfriend of mine what she prayed to, and she said, oh, I pray to Mick Jagger. <laughs> uh, and I asked another girlfriend, well, you, if you don't pray to Mick Jagger, what do you pray to? And she said, well, I pray to sunspots. Uh, and then I thought, well, I must believe in something. Uh, and I realized that I believed in a line from the poet Dylan Thomas, mm -hmm. The force that through the green fuse drives the flower. That creative energy that was very powerful and very specific. Uh, and I thought, well, maybe I could pray to that energy. So I, I started praying to that energy. Uh, and I was, found myself thinking, I, I want to stay a writer. I I don't want to be struck a waitress. I don't want to be struck a saleswoman. I must have something uh, that I can hold on to. Uh, and I was told, put up a little sign, Julia, that says, okay, God, 
you take care of the quality, I'll take care of the quantity. Uh, and then try writing and letting that creative energy write through you. And I said, oh, but what if it doesn't want to? <laughs> and they said, well, just try it. So I began to try to pray to let the creative force write through me. Uh, and what happened uh, is is that I, I began to be led a, a step at a time uh, toward unblocking myself. Uh, and I was told, try and help others. Uh, and I thought, I don't want to help others. <laughs> I, I want to help me. <laughs> me, me, me. Uh, and, um, but I was sent a, another writer who was blocked. Uh, and so I said to him, well, you might want to try letting that creative force write through you. You might want to try uh, being a, a channel or a conduit. Uh, and he said, this all sounds too woo-woo. <laughs> And I, I said, well, it may sound woo-woo, but it might work. Uh, and what happened was he used the tools and he became unblocked. So you've got four core tools for creative recovery. For those, and I don't know who these people would be, who may be unaware of your work, but I think for the purpose of this video and this interview, it would be awesome if we could walk through the tools, and I kind of want to go deep on two of them, morning pages and asking for guidance. So let's start with morning pages. For those that don't know, what is that tool and how would they begin to use it? Well, morning pages are three pages of longhand morning writing that you do first thing on awakening. Uh, and uh, you, you write them on eight and a half by 11 paper. Uh, and you write, this is what I like. This is what I don't like. This is what I want more of. This is what I want less of. Uh, and it's as if you're sending a little telegram to the universe. Uh, and you're you're saying, here is my precise position. Here is how I authentically actually feel. So it's a form of prayer and meditation. Uh, and uh, you don't show them to anybody. They're top secret. Uh, and uh, they are done longhand rather than on a computer. Because what happens when we write longhand is that we go deep. And what happens when we write on the computer is that we may go whizzing past something important. Mm -hmm. So uh, morning pages are a tool of expansion. Uh, you, you start to write them uh, and you, you are given a dare. Uh, and the pages say, you might want to try X. Uh, and you find yourself thinking, I can't. That's too threatening. I, I don't believe I can do that. Uh, and the pages are stubborn. And they say, you will do that. Uh, in, in my case, it was writing music. Uh, I was 45 years old. I was raised as the non-musical one in a very musical family. Uh, and the pages kept saying, you will be writing radiant songs. Uh, and I kept thinking, not bloody likely. <laughs> <laughs> but what happened was they were, they were persistent. Uh, and I found myself... Uh, going to visit a girlfriend and complaining bitterly to her, I've been praying for what to do next, and I'm told I'm going to be writing music. 
radiant songs. And and I don't think it's possible. I think if I were the least bit musical, I would know it. And she said, she lived up in the Rocky Mountains. She said, why don't you go sit down by the stream? And she pointed me down the slope to where a little Rocky Mountain stream went running through her property. Uh, And I went down to the stream uh, and I sat down on a boulder and I was sort of half-assed meditating. Uh, And all of a sudden I heard, My green heart is filled with apples. Your dark face is filled with stars. I am the one that you've forgotten. You are the one my heart desires. So dance when you think of me. Sing to remember me. Sing till your heart can see who we are. Dance when you think of me. Sing to remember me. Sing till your heart can see who we are. Mm. And I thought, I think it's a song. (laughs) Oh, my God. It is. And I went racing back up the hill, and she said, Here, sing it into this little tape recorder. Uh, And I sang it into the little tape recorder. Uh, And what happened after that was that I had 60 pieces of music come through me. And so now, if you go to my website, juliacameronlive.com, you can say there's a section that's called Julia's Art, uh, and there's a section in in that on music, uh, and it has three musicals that I've written uh, and many flower songs that are just sort of delightful little ditties. Yes, I've listened to some. They are magical. So I feel like uh, Morning Pages dared me to become larger, Mm. uh, and I eventually took up the dare. So that's Morning Pages. Uh, And at the end of In the Artist's Way... I talk about asking for guidance, Uh, and could I have guidance about X? Uh, And then I listen. Uh, And so people will say to me, Julia, you've written 40 books. Why are you now suddenly talking about guidance? Uh, And I realized that I've been using guidance for 30 years myself, And I used it so frequently that it was invisible to me. Mm -hmm. And then I realized, well, I I need to make it visible and accountable uh, for my students. So um, I asked them to inquire what should I write next? What should I do next? And listen for guidance. Uh, And they were often saying, well, Julia, what if it's just my imagination when I hear something back? Uh, And I say, well, if it is your imagination, your imagination is much more powerful and benevolent than you had previously thought. So more power to it. <laughs> yes. I got to tell you, just quickly, I um, I practiced asking for guidance this morning at the end of my morning pages. It was the first time that I did it in the fashion that you lay out for us, which is, you know, you had given the example that you will write LJ for little Julia. So I wrote LM for little Marie. And I asked probably five or six questions this morning when I did my morning pages at the end. And 
I will tell you, the answers were simple and straightforward. They felt wise and truthful. And it was fantastic. So I think uh, I want everybody to experiment with asking for guidance. Uh, and I have been told uh, it doesn't have to be difficult. It The answers are simple, straightforward, loving, yes. encouraging. Yes. Uh, and that sounds like that's your experience. Oh, you know, I've experimented with a form of guided writing, you know, doing a bit of a meditation, asking a question, and then almost doing like stream of consciousness. But what I love about your method of asking for wisdom, it's like a Q&A. It is so conversational and so direct and so right there. What should I do about I'm working on a new writing project? I was asking about a piece of real estate. Then I was asking about, you know, I went all over to the different nooks and crannies of my life from the big stuff to the tiny stuff and it flowed. So I just want to give that texture so that anyone listening, if they think like, oh my goodness, Julia Cameron hears guidance, but I don't know if anyone else could. I just want to give that further encouragement of how profound and fun and simple and easy it was. And I wanted to thank you for that because it's brilliant. You're very welcome. So I would love to talk, if you're open to it, about the productivity of creativity. Um, you know, and this is just me being, uh, me being curious because as a, a writer myself who loves your work so much, do you outline your new books before you start writing? You know, do you work from a table of contents or are you in such a flow now, Julia, after so many decades that you just sit down and you're just like, I'm going to write and it'll be complete when it's complete? Well, that's a good description of how I do it. Yeah. I, I do not write from an outline. Mm -hmm. I do not write from a table of contents. I sit down and I ask, what next? Wow. Uh, and then I listen. Uh, and the... um. The pages seem to come one right after another. The words come one right after another. Uh, and uh, I believe that all of us can have this experience. Uh, and that what happens with morning pages uh, is that it trains you to stand to one side uh, and let a flow move through you. So I think uh, we should say that when we do morning pages, we may encounter our critic who, who says, you're boring, this has been done before, what are you doing? Uh, and what we learn to say to our critic is, thank you for sharing. <laughs> And then we keep right on writing morning pages. Uh, and this is a portable skill. Uh, and so when we sit down to do our, quote, serious writing, uh, and the critic shows up, we say, oh, thank you for sharing. And it goes from being an, a large, overbearing ogre to being a wee peeping cartoon character. <laughs> Isn't Julia just amazing? Now, if you want to write more consistently and have the right words just flow out of you, go to thecopycure.com and sign up for our free seven-day writing class. Just pop in your first name and your email and you will get lesson number one instantly. You're going to love this. So head on over to thecopycure.com and sign up for your free writing class now. So... Staying on process just for a few more minutes, um, I read somewhere when I was doing my research to talk with you that when you're doing a first draft of your next book that you actually aim for about three pages a day, which will get you about 90 pages a month. Is that, again, just in that flow of like you'll write for about three pages? Have you ever been the type of writer who feels like you want to stretch or say, oh, I'm supposed to reach a certain 
you know, word count or working on deadlines? Or again, is it just a different kind of experience for you? I think it's a different kind of experience for me. I I write my morning pages, three pages of morning writing. Yeah. Uh, and then later on in the day, I sit down to write on my, quote, real project. <laughs> yes. And uh, one more time, uh, I I find that three pages is a manageable amount. Yeah. And I I don't try to do more than three pages because I don't want to strip my gears. Uh, and uh, this brings us to an artist's date. So every day you write your morning pages. That's a daily practice that you do despite resistance. Uh, and when I'm teaching and I say, I have a tool for you. It's a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to get up 45 minutes early and work. People will say, work? Oh, I get it. I'm going to work on my creativity. So they're quite willing to do the work of morning pages. But then I say, now, once a week, I want you to go out by yourself do something incredibly interesting, friendly, frivolous, fun. It's a, a, sort of an assigned play. And what happens when I start to talk about do an artist's date, take your creative consciousness out for a little expedition, people say, oh, I don't see what play has to do with working on our creativity. And they cross their arms and they tilt their heads and they, they get very skeptical. Uh, and uh, I say to them then, well, we have an expression, the play of ideas, and we don't realize that it's actually a prescription. <laughs> play. <laughs> And you'll get ideas. Uh, and I think um, what happens when we're working on a project uh, is that we start fishing from an inner well. Uh, and uh, what happens uh, is that we hook images, we hook ideas, uh, we hook concepts, uh, and what happens then is sometimes people will say, Julia, I was doing so well. Uh, and then it dried up. Uh, and I say, well, it dried up because you overfished your inner well. Mm. You, you hooked too many ideas without replenishing the the, the flow of images. So artist dates replenish the inner well. Uh, and uh, if you're working flat out, I sometimes say try to take two artist dates in a week. Mm. But that's usually not necessary. Usually people can get by taking one artist date a week. My favorite artist date uh, is going to a pet store where they have a big giant bunny named George. Uh, and I go to the pet store uh, and I ask the owner, can I pet George? Uh, and he says, well, that's up to George. <laughs> but I have found that George likes to be petted. Uh, and it gives me a sense of whimsy, mm -hmm. expansion, delight, uh, sensuality. Uh, and I find that an artist state that has all those factors in it uh, refills my inner well. Mm. Okay, so we've... We've covered three of our core tools, morning pages, artist date, and asking for guidance. Shall we talk about 
the final tool of the four? Well, I think we're talking now about walking. Yes. Uh, and I think walking is something uh, that is so simple that we tend to overlook it. Yes. Uh, and what I have found is that if you go out a couple times a week for 20 minutes at a crack uh, and walk by yourself, you you wake up to a sense of benevolence. Uh, you, I've had people say to me, Julia, I think I felt God. <laughs> uh, and they're sort of marveling uh, at the connection that they feel when they walk. So we recently lost a wonderful Buddhist teacher named Thich Nhat Hanh. Yes. And he is a, was a great believer in walking. Uh, and he said, try and walk as if with each footfall you're kissing the earth. Mm. So beautiful. I was um, just in Costa Rica a few weeks ago, and I thought of you because uh, I had my last morning there before I was jumping on a plane back to New York, and I got up early. I did my morning pages, and then I went for about a 30-minute walk into the forest and into the jungle without my phone, without anything. And it was so incredibly healing. And it made me think I need to do more of this. I need to do more of this, you know, in my, in where I live and wherever I am. And I, I think, and please correct me if I'm wrong, when we go walking for this purpose, Leave your phones. Don't listen to anything. Don't bring anyone else. It's not for pets. It's not for companions. It's for you and the creative force. Is that right? That's exactly right. Yeah. And sometimes people will say, oh, but I'd like to listen to music. Uh, and then I say, well, then you're listening to the composer's walk. <laughs> Yes, yes. Or or they say, I want to take my dog. Uh, and I say, well, if you take your dog, your dog is going to start saying things like, oh, look at that handsome Rottweiler. <laughs> oh, look at that adorable Cocker Spaniel. <laughs> uh, and you find yourself taking your dog's walk. So it's something that's done solo just you and your creative consciousness. Mm. Let's talk about the power of making lists. Um, I know one motivated your cross-country move. I think you lived in New York for many, many years, and then you moved to Santa Fe, and I believe it was following an exercise from one of your books about listing just 25 things that you love. <laughs> Do you want to talk about the power that sometimes lists can have in unearthing our next moves or something that we may want to go explore? Well, I, I think they're very powerful. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think for me, uh, I, I had been living in New York, uh, and I did, an, it's an artist's way exercise of listing 25 things you loved. Yeah. Uh, and I started listing... Uh, and I listed, well, I love mountains. Well, I love golden chamisa bushes. Well, I love green chili. Well, I love black beans. Uh, and I'm looking at this list, and I'm going, nowhere on here does it say the Empire State Building. <laughs> uh, I I found my list was that I was living in New York, but my heart was in the Southwest. So that became the, the impulse uh, that moved me to Santa Fe. If anyone listening or watching right now feels like they just don't have any idea of what they could write about, they feel completely like a blank slate, 
What would be something that you could suggest for someone to get their creative juices flowing? And we know we've got the tools under our belt, but is there anything that you would say to someone who's just like, I have no idea what to write about right now? Well, I think what you're asking me for is, is there a secret final tool? Uh, and uh, the answer is there is no secret tool. The, the tools are the tools that, that are explained at great length. Uh, and um, morning pages will give people a clue uh, as to what to write about. Yes. Uh, and another thing, uh, I would say the power of the list, write 25 things you love uh, and then look down the list and see if something sort of gently beeps at, at you. Uh, you're, I, I believe in coaxing ourselves forward mm. not in flogging ourselves forward so if we coax ourselves forward uh, we may find ourselves saying oh I'm living amid skyscrapers but I'm missing mountains yes Julia this is just such a powerful conversation. Um, I am so grateful for your continued contribution. Is there anything that you want to leave people with as we wrap up today on the power of creativity, consistency, continuing to show up for yourself? Anything that you want to share? Well, I think the power of creativity is the power of consistency, is showing up for yourself. So I would gently say to people, please, I'd like you to try morning pages, uh, and I'd like you to go on an artist date. I'd, I'd like you to take a walk, and I'd like you to ask for guidance about what it is you should do next, uh, and then listen. So I think uh, a great deal of what I'm talking about is the power of prayer, where we say, Dear God, please guide me, uh, and the power of listening for the guidance that we hear. Uh, and I think... Uh, I think we are led. I believe that. So I think we should say uh, that this is the 30th anniversary of The Artist's Way. Wow. And, How uh, incredible. It has been climbing bestseller lists. Uh, after 30 years, uh, it's, it's number three in Los Angeles. Uh, and... Uh, I think that the power of the pandemic cracked many of us open to spiritual ideas. Yes. Uh, and I think uh, the artist's way has been enjoying a, a renaissance uh, because it's a, a proven, gentle path for expansion. Yes. Uh, and I, I think that's what many of us have been looking for. If people will go to JuliaCameronLive.com, uh, they will find lots of art, uh, and uh, it's for free. Uh, and uh, I, I think I'd like to read a poem. Yes, if Please. we could, of course. And this was a poem uh, that. You know, many times people believe creativity is born out of pain. Uh, but I have found that creativity is born out of joy. So this is called, Jerusalem is Walking in This World. Mm. 
This is a great happiness. The air is silk. There is milk in the looks that come from strangers. I could not be happier if I were bread and you could eat me. Joy is dangerous. It fills me with secrets. Yes, kisses in my veins. The pains I take to hide myself are sheer as glass. Surely this will pass. The wind, like kisses. The music in the soup. The group of trees laughing as I say their names. It is all Hosanna. It is all prayer. Jerusalem is walking in this world. Jerusalem is walking in this world. So beautiful. Thank you so much for that. You're welcome. So for anyone who's interested, go to juliacameronlive.com and you can enjoy so much beautiful music and artwork and poems from Julia in addition to seeing the over 40 books that she's produced, all of which are absolutely brilliant. Julia, I adore you. I thank you. And we so appreciate you making the time today. You're very welcome. It's a pleasure to talk to you. I got a question for you. Do you ever wish that you could just write faster? Well, I have got the next episode for you that you got to watch right now. It's How to Write Fast, Eight Secrets to Better, Quicker Content Creation. Click on it now. You're going to love it. You want to think about your end result. What is the thing that you want your reader to walk away with? What action, if any, do you want them to take? Then you have to reverse engineer your content to get them there. 